the moral of the story is if you're going to do something stupid that's going to cause you to get audited, screw it up so bad that no one can figure out what you're going to do. <laughs> So you're recommending the train wreck strategy, is that it? <laughs> now, the other auditor I dealt with was a desk line. And this was, my client was being audited for his charitable contributions. And so I had to go in, provide this documentation, and I faxed it to her. And then I met with her, like, at the end of June of 2015. And it was down to the federal building. And I noticed a couple things right away. First of all, when you go in the federal building downtown, it's like going to the TSA. You have to go through the screeners and I had to actually take my shoes off to be able to get through the screener because it kept deep in for many. The second thing I noticed is I was parking myself in the lobby was like, how many people were there carrying guns? I mean, there was like the TSA, there was Homeland Security, there was like God knows who else. I'm thinking, man, if there's ever a shootout in this lobby, this lobby I'd be a singing duck. Finally, I go up with you with the auditor and we chat, and she asks me a bunch of questions. I'm very careful not to <coughs> expand on my answers. And, and I said, and then she mentioned, well, I didn't get all of your facts. I said, well, no problem. It's an internet fact, so I just go to one of your machines, and I'll just talk to you from there. I said, well, I hate to admit this, but we don't have an internet connection on our office. And you say, what? It says, but you can go across the street to the Seattle Public Library and send it from one of their computers. Oh my God. I'm thinking, yeah, that's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? I'll just waltz across the street, stand in line with a bunch of other people, and then send confidential information over an unsecured line. <laughs> that's not a real good idea if I want to get sued for daily just because someone had their identity stolen. I said, well, I'll, I'll wait until I get back to my office and I'll fax it again. When I left her, I was under the distinct impression that I would be hearing from her within two weeks with a preliminary audit report that I could give to my client. Okay, two weeks go by, <coughs> a month goes by, haven't heard from her. Two months go by, still haven't heard from her. Three months go by, my client saying, what's going on with this audit? So I try to call on the auditor wouldn't answer my phone calls. You can never get a hold of these items people anyway. I also tried to um, send an email, wouldn't respond. So finally, in frustration, I called someone I knew at the IRS and got her boss's name and phone number. I called her boss. Of course, her boss was in the boss's voice. But I got the admin's name and <coughs> called the admin. I actually got a hold of the right person. And I said, um, can I talk to so-and-so? She says, well, she's away from her desk. Can I take a message? Says, oh, wait a minute. I see her coming back from when she's down the hall. I'll flag her down. So needless to say, she was a little bit surprised when she heard it was, found out it was me. She says, hey, how's it going? You know, I haven't heard from you in, what, maybe three months? <laughs> so, and quite frankly, says, well, I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson. I, I, I didn't mean to call you. I said, you know, I've been checking the obituaries looking for your name because I thought <laughs> <laughs> you have died and maybe the others just forgot to tell me about it. Well, she assured me that she was not dead. Although I don't know if I'd call working for the IRS as exactly living. <laughs> she told me that, well, other things got bumped up in priority three months later. I don't know if I hadn't called the IRS, I may still be going around. So but at least she knew that I had her name and her boss's phone number and that I was not afraid to call. Now, my final example, this is simply an audit list with a revenue officer. And these are people you don't want to meet because they, I call them the IRS repo man. They either want to seize your assets or want to scare the daylights out of you threatening to me. You know, having to file returns. And so I got this phone call from this client saying that he, you know, it seems like either drop out of the ceiling or worship on your doorstep. But their main goal is to surprise you. Now, as far as I know, they're not crashing weddings <laughs> or showing up at funerals, mm. but I think everything else is pretty fair game. The objective is to catch you off guard. 
And whatever you do, don't sign anything. In fact, don't even let, let them in your house. He hadn't filed his tax returns for since 2008. And the thing that was kind of funny was that she was threatening that if he didn't file by such and such date, she was going to turn it over for audit. And I was kind of laughing at my sleeve when I saw that because that would take at least six months to hear to get those returns done. <coughs> and it also turns out that he didn't owe seven. He didn't owe seven tax returns. He owed fourteen because there was a C corp that the IRS didn't know about. <laughs> <laughs> so I I got those done, but. The thing is, you can never get a hold of these IRS people. I would call her, wouldn't answer the phone. I tried to call her cell phone, and I kept getting this at her mailbox was full. <laughs> so finally, out of frustration, I had called and left a message on her voicemail, suggesting it was very important that she called me. Well, about 15 minutes later, I get a frantic phone call from my client saying that the auditor had just called him. I was complaining about that some CPA had left a snooty message on her voicemail. And I didn't think I was being snooty. I just really suggested that she was too busy to help me. Maybe I should talk to her boss. <laughs> like I say, don't like it. And then I found out that basically the reason why I couldn't get a hold of her is that she had had her car broken into before and had a computer and her cell phone stolen. The IRS was, was too cheap to give her a new cell phone. And apparently too cheap to give her a new business card because she still had the disconnected number on the cell phone. I got that finished. So as you can see, dealing with the IRS is not, you're not dealing with supermen. You're dealing with very valuable people that are under a lot of stress and strain. And so it's up to you to become as knowledgeable as possible. So you can take advantage of the confusion and life and incompetence on the part of the IRS. So, like I said, there's no need to panic if you're prepared for my unbiased opinion is better to get it But you can represent yourself and you really have more power than you think you have. So, stay calm and become knowledgeable. And with that, I will open it up to the and open to some questions.